Hello, y'all. Hey, uh, my name is Damon Witzel. I'm the manager of the How to Become a Christian Apologetics Network and the owner of this YouTube channel. And uh, I'd like to make my first video here today. I've had a webcam for a while, but haven't been able to get it hooked up because my CD-ROM was is broke. And so I'd like to start this video by saying hello to hey, all my friends out there in the blogosphere and on the World Wide Web. Uh, th but get, to get right to the video, I visited a site today that had a uh, a video of Todd Bentley saying that he was uh, strongly uh, influenced by Kenneth Hagen, and in the uh, uh, comment section, the owner of the blog had commented that uh, Hank Hanegraaff was against uh, the Word of Faith movement because he was an anti-supernaturalist, and so I had to comment that that just wasn't the case because Hank Hanegraaff himself is a charismatic a continuationist and he's not just against the word of faith movement he's also against such movements like the new apostolic reformation movement with Peter Wagner Todd Bentley and all the guys he's also against the third wave of the charismatic movement the manifest son of Godders the uh, uh, Joel's army uh, and so uh, Hanegraaff is a practicer of some of the gifts, so he cannot be accused of being an anti-supernaturalist. That's just a straw man argument that is often lodged against uh, by word of faithers and charismatics in general about this subject. But anyway, she goes on to state after I told her that Hanegraaff was not a supernaturalist. She says Hanegraaff is against quote Hanegraaff is against the word of faith. He calls it the counterfeit revival. They label the word of faith as a movement, but the gospel is the word of faith. No, it is not. She says, according to Apostles Romans 10.8, and then she quotes it, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Then she goes on to state, to not receive the word of faith is to reject the true gospel and all the called ministry gifts, which is rejecting the Lord himself. And this is just not true at all, because the gospel is clearly defined within the context of Romans 10.8. You know, if you go, uh, if you read the whole passage from Romans 10, 1 through 17, you, it will stand out to you that the context that the word of faith, uh, what is being preached is the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is proven so in the uh, in verse number 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved or with uh, and then it, uh, uh, you know that this this is the same thing that shows the Romans 6.23 the gospel in a nutshell for the wages of sin of death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the gospel is also clearly stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again on the third day according to Scripture. You know, Paul in another portion of his writing states that if the, the, that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and so much that if the resurrection of Jesus Christ didn't happen, we will still die in our sins, and the wages of sin of six, Romans 6.23 is still incurred to our account. And we're still liable for that. You know, the gospel, uh, Paul goes on in Galatians 1 through 3 and in, Gala in 2 Corinthians 11, 3 through 4 to go on to state that anybody that preaches another gospel, they should be anathema, a curse to hell. Uh, it, pre it says, but though we or another angel preach any other gospel unto you, which we have preached, let him be accursed. That includes any angel uh, named Emma that Todd Bentley is uh, uh, channeling, uh, or whether if it happened to be uh, uh, William Brannan, it's the same same angel named Emma. And but anyway, the Word of Faith movement is uh, is. Basically, witchcraft veiled in Christian terms. From a uh, witchcraft site, the links will be over here on the, the right-hand column. Witchcraft says, 
a witchcraft site says of witchcraft, Mankind is always attempted to know the unknowable and control it, control it by his own actions. At the same time, it was recognized that there were powers beyond his ability to control. Throughout history, certain people have been accepted as being better at controlling the powers that represent natural forces, such as earthquake, wind, fire, flood, and disease. In some cases, these powers were named as gods or goddesses. And at other times, the forces themselves were named and summoned and controlled by the will of humans known as witches in our modern language. The power possessed by a witch or shaman skilled in the art and working of witchcraft was assumed to be almost limitless. By saying certain words or power names in the correct manner and correct tone of voice, the witch can heal the ill and can cast out evil spirits which caused pain and suffering in those who were diseased. In, in inanimate nature also obeyed the words of witchcraft, and even the creation of the world itself was through a spoken word. No, it wasn't. It was through the creative power of God. He didn't have to say a word. But the other, but the uh, quote goes on to say, the words could tear the earth apart and make water pile up in a heap, and even the sun uh, should be stopped in its course by a word uttered in witchcraft. If you'll look over here, I'll have a lot more. Uh, quotes from witchcrafts explaining just what uh, witchcraft is and I'll explain the differences between witchcraft and Christianity but I'd like to uh, to just go straight to saying that you know Benny Hinn, uh, Kenneth Copeland and Paul Crouch all these guys know that exactly. Uh, Benny Hinn claims that the Holy Spirit told him quote that if witches and occultists can speak death by the supernatural power of words then uh, the Christian can speak life and prosperity by the same power. Uh, then uh, Benny Hinn uh, says on a uh, TBN program, the verification over here, the re resource links will be over there. Uh, Benny Hinn says, witches even. I mean, I'm not here to talk about witches, but I tell you this. And Paul Crouch interjects, they, they know the secret? Benny Hinn said, because see, I had a witch tell me this. And I say, what? She said, listen to me. Uh, she said, you do know that we are taught in witchcraft how to kill birds with words and how to kill people with our mouth. I said, what do you mean kill people? She said, we are taught with words to bring disease on men. I say, how? She said, by speaking certain words, unintelligible. Uh, she said, we can actually cause sickness that could very well kill. And you know, if y any of y'all have ever heard Paul Kraut's in this same conversation later on, they go and say that there was people that had come against TBN and their ministry, a group in California, and that people were dropping dead at the pulpit. Uh, the so-called heresy hunters were dropping dead. Well, if you know, uh, uh, if you study this, you'll know that they're actually claiming to have, by the power of their own words and the curses that they pronounce, they're actually... Uh, claiming to have killed Dr. Walter Martin for his article that he wrote for uh, the book The Agony of Deceit, which uh, was edited uh, uh, by Michael Horton. And uh, so anyway, I, I, I come to you, Word of Faith people. I've got Word of Faith people in my family. I've got friends that are Word of Faith. I even have a friend that is paralyzed now because he exercised this Word of Faith, this false definition of faith. And I'll tell a story more about that. But I ask you guys, please repent while there's still time. Thank you, and God bless you. I hope to see you all in heaven. And I hope that this life isn't the only heaven you'll ever know.